Hi and welcome to Informatica Video Support. I am Anubandha Kulkarni and I am from the MDM RE support team. In this session, I will be talking about how to create an IR system from multiple user source tables using the merged from clause. The agenda for today's session is we will take a look at the prerequisites before creating the IR system, then create an IR system using the STF wizard, then load the IDT, and then verify the data loaded in IDT from multiple user source tables. For this demo, I have installed IR version 9.5.2 and Oracle database. So we can create an identity table which is the IDT by merging data from two or more user source tables with multiple heterogeneous databases permitted. For this session, I have two user source tables, both of which reside on the same database. So let's take a look at these tables in the source. UST1 and UST2 are the two source tables with the same structure, that means the same columns in both these tables, their structure is identical. That means they have the same primary key, unique ID in both these tables. I have some sample data that's loaded for both of these tables. So UST2 has two records in it and UST1 has three records in it. Now when we create an IR system, extract and merge this data from both these tables and put it in an IDT, we should be able to verify that the IDT that has been created has all these columns in it as well as all these five records from both these tables. So let's see how to do that. We first create an IR system using the admin console. So I have the console already open. I click on new, I create an STF. So this will be creating an STF from scratch using the system definition wizard. So let's create a system. Let's call it test multiple extract. Optionally, we can provide a description as well. The target database type is Oracle. Now let's create an IDT. We'll call it multiple source IDT. The data source is a database and we merge source tables. We don't enable synchronization for the session. So let's skip that. We provide the source login credentials. So this is our first source table. What we'll do is, we'll take each of these columns and add them to the IDT. So click on add IDT field, you see that they'll be added here. And let's keep unique ID as the primary key in the IDT as well. Now what we'll do for these remaining columns, first name, middle name and last name is, we'll apply a transformation to these columns. Let's say we'll concatenate all these columns and create a new field in the IDT called as the full name which will essentially concatenate all these columns into this new column which is full name. Let's do the same for the second source. We'll select the same columns, click on transform, concatenate and now instead of creating a new field in the IDT for the second source, we'll merge it with the existing column that was created earlier which is the full name. And for the remaining columns, let's say unique ID that was selected from the second source will be merged, click on merge, with the unique ID from the first source. So this is how each of these columns is merged. So date of birth is merged with date of birth in the first source. Street address is similarly merged. Then the zip code, the city, state 
and finally the gender. So this is how we've merged all the columns. So we're done creating the identity. Now let's create a definition for the index. Let's say name is our index, system is default, population is USA, the data type is person name and from the field list I select full name. Let's create a search as well. Let's say we have a search on the full name. The purpose is person name. So let's add it as, per as the purpose. And we'll finally match the field list in the source to the field list in the IDT. So person name is mapped to full name. Address part one is mapped to street address. Date is mapped to date of birth. Address part two to city. Postal area to zip code. And then we don't have a telephone number. So let's say attribute one is mapped to state. And attribute two is mapped to gender. Let's delete the other two since we don't need it. So here we have the IDT definition, the index definition and the search definition. Save it and close the wizard. Now if you see the IDS folder which is in the SSA top, you have this test multiple extract STF created, which is created this. So if you look at this STF, it has all the definitions that we created in the wizard. And what we have here is the user source table section, wherein we are creating an IDT which is merged from the first source and merged from the second source. So you see two pairs of the merged from and transform clauses. You see all these columns have to be the same, so that's the rule. And only one pair can have the primary key defined for it. So we have to skip the primary key that is defined for the second source. Let's say we add another transformation which says we'll be adding a new column called as the SRC ID, which does not reside in any of these sources. But that column will be added automatically during runtime when the IDT is created and loaded using the IR. So let's say the name of this transformation is insert constant and insert that constant with a value of say 200 the name of this column is say src id which is a source id give it a data type and a length and an order which says this is an order of the column in the id i add the same transformation in the second pair as well but the rule is i cannot have the data type length and order defined for the subsequent pairs. So let's say I have a different value for this constant, say 100k. Okay, so this is how we edit this STF in the editor. Save it. And now load the system using this STF. So I click on new. I say create a system from an STF, which is test multiple extract. This is the name of the system that's there in my STF. This is the name of the system definition file. And click on OK. Close. Now select the system that was just created. And now we load the IDT. Okay, so this IDT was loaded successfully without any errors. How do we verify this? We go to the database. 
let's see what's the IDT that got created okay so this is the IDT that got created and here's all the data that we have that's extracted and merged from both the sources so you see all the columns are the same they're the same columns that have been merged from both the sources well we see a new column which is called IDS parse block number which is a column that is added by IR automatically so what do these numbers indicate these numbers say that this record has been gotten and loaded to the IDT from which source so this record says it has got the data that's loaded from the source that was defined in the merged from and transform pair section in the IDT so let's say 12 cross treat this is the first record and IDS block number is 2 which means if you open the STF it says the data was loaded from this source that means 2 means the second block the second transform and merge from block similarly one denotes the same it says these records have been taken from the source that was defined in the STF in the first merge from and transform block so this is what the IDS parse block number is this is a reserved column name and it shouldn't be used in your IDT for any other purpose this column is added automatically it's a reserved column name so this is how we create an IR system load an IDT from data that's emerging from multiple sources these sources could be in the same database or they could be residing in different or heterogeneous databases so with this I end my session if you have any comments on the session you can put them on any of these portals we'd love to hear them from you and thank you for listening